the six. It's revitalized in part because of what they've done defensively, but the QB's been a big part, too. Yeah, they've taken the ball away, but the real focus is now Clemson faces another good rushing attack whose leading rusher is a quarterback, Malik Cunningham. Now, he's got a bit of an issue with his left hand that he banged up against Notre Dame last week. Not sure how much that's going to impact him today. Will Shipley will wait. There is no return of the kick, and here come the Tigers on their first offensive possession from their 25. Tiffany Blackman. Hey, guys. When I spoke with DJ Uyangalole, he told me last week's loss to Notre Dame was definitely disappointing, but that at the end of the day, it's about how they respond. And in what could have been a difficult week for him after getting pulled from a game for the second time this season, it was anything but. Offensive coordinator Brandon Streeter told us he loves that DJ. When he faces adversity, he always responds. His demeanor, his mindset, nothing ever changes with him, guys. Well, we're going to keep an eye early because they're going to go five wide on the first snap. Yeah, he's got adversity because he's had two rough games in a row. That's Allen, the tight end in motion, and Uwe Ungalale barrels for six, almost seven yards on the first carry of the ball game. Yeah, you, you think about this young man, Uwe Ungalale, and what he's been through. He has weathered the storm for a couple seasons, wore all the burden of last year's three-loss season, and then seven straight games, he looked fantastic. And in the last two weeks, he struggled. Second down and three. DJ will keep it here and fall across the 35 for a first down. So a couple snaps and a couple QB runs well, maybe to get him comfortable. Yeah, and Wes, this is no surprise. Offensive coordinator Brandon Streeter said, look, I want to get him com comfortable. I want to help him, and whatever that is, yeah. and maybe that's running the ball. So first two drops, first two snaps, have him run the ball. See Shipley in the backfield. Cards crowd that line. Uwe Ungalale to throw for the first time, and he will sail it over the head of Brandon Spector over on the far side. Yeah, you know, again, you want to get him comfortable, throws that he wants to have. Right. It's important that you get his confidence going, but that you also get the crowd on his side. Now, the crowd is anxious about the quarterback position. We've been around here, read all the stuff, heard people talking. You know, they, they want him to get off to a good start as well. That was Monty Montgomery collapsing the pocket in front of Uwe Ungalale, and that one's offline as it pecked, it is. Nope, ruled incomplete. It looked like Quincy Riley had come up with what would have been his 10th career interception on a deflection. Yeah, a little bit too much heat on that one. You know, and the first two throws, you know, are not ideal for DJ Uwe Ungalale. And that one was almost picked off. So, you again, confidence. Not quite there yet. On the field is an incomplete pass. That play is under further review. So it was the collision of Keytrail Clark. I tell you. And Specter. Clark has been hot lately, huh? Yep, sure has. And so has Quincy Riley, and so is Louisville on defense. Early review at Tiger Town. I'm the captain of the Pee Wee football team. We made this. It's Clemson with third and the full 10 on their opening drive of the game, and Riley denied what would have been his third interception of the year a moment ago. And Louisville likes to bring pressure in third and long situations. And the Tigers are going to give them yeah. five to the house here because. Start. Offense, number 56. Look, five you know, West. Third down. This is a confident Louisville defense. Yep. They've been playing lights out the last four weeks, and, and their mission right now is to make life miserable for DJ Uyangalele. Show him pressure, bring pressure, knock him around. Third and 15 now. He'll shoot it downfield. That's caught and got him, and it'll be a first down. How pretty is that? How pretty is that? Now, that is the kind of throw that led him to be the number one quarterback pocket passer coming out in 2020. Big, strong NFL throw to the sideline. 24 yards of first down in Louisville territory. He'll fake the toss to Shipley. Bang away again off the left side. Three, four yards. I thought our conversation with Brandon Streeter yesterday was really interesting as it related to early throws and running the ball from Big Cinco to get him to feel good about where the day might go, Rod. Well, remember, Brandon Streeter went through it. I mean, he had that experience of being a quarterback who, you know, had a lot of burden and 
you know, struggled and had to get his confidence going. So he knows exactly what he's been going through. Here's the throw on the perimeter, the catch. And this is Brenning Stool, the big tight end at 6-6. Making the grab, close to a first down on the Minkins tackle out of the Louisville secondary. And this is a good job of an offensive coordinator understanding what he has to do. Get his quarterback comfortable. What do you like? You want to run the ball, get a couple hits, feel better? You want to throw the quick screen? You like the outs? Whatever it is you like, that's what we're going to run. Just the second catch for Jake Brenningstool in the last four games and change. So here is third and short. It's Antonio Williams in motion. Here is Shipley's first carry. And I think he cracked enough of the 35 here for the first down. And indeed he did. First uh, touch for Shipley. A young man is a, really a great perimeter runner, not afraid to run inside. He, he needs, what, 20 plus touches today? I'd say that, yeah. The magic number, I think, is 13 for Will Shipley, but 20 would probably be advantageous for the Tigers. Here's a good throw, and this is the first crab of the freshman, Antonio Williams. Jarvis Brownlee shoved him out of bounds, but Rod, to me, between Shipley one and zero Williams, you got a perfect 10 if you're the Tigers with ah, these two. I like that. Yeah, that kind of works, huh? Put them <laughs> together and it's a good 10. They got to play like a 10 because they need wide receiver help today for the quarterback. Crowd fans, uh, the Clemson fans here want a penalty for delay a game because Clemson's ready to go. 10th play of the drive here. And <laughs> speaking of uh, ready to go. Uh, Williams EJ Williams was, Williams was ready to go. 15 yards down the field. Yeah. Snap yeah. count doesn't matter. <laughs> Dabo Sweeney's got to be thinking. I, I think. Huh? What? I think the ball was going to him. Yeah. So now they swap fellows around. Specter and Antonio Williams will go to the wide side. And Gata, who kept the drive alive on the 24 yard catch a moment ago, here to the boundary. And this is Shipley. 15 and slips down at the 12. Tigers a first down. Minkins saved the touchdown. What a great block inside. Senator Will Putnam and the left guard Marcus Tate opened up a huge hole. Shipley just had to waltz through it. Good open field tackle to save six. Tigers at the 12 here. Quick give. Shipley one more time and. Boy, Louisville rallies to the football. You know, if your offensive line can play like this, look at this huge hole open up inside, putting him the center, doing a great job. It's going to make for a great day for Shipley with the holes like that. Red zone now. You see Clemson's numbers. A lot of quarterback run down here for Clemson. Here's Uwe Ungalale. He'll keep it. Looking for a block. Has it at the five. Touchdown, Tigers. Converted a third and 15 with a 24 yard throw to Ngata and Rod. Now they're standing in the end zone. I'd say, I'd say that quarterback looks kind of comfortable. But run it four times for 25 yards, three completions and five attempts, score a touchdown opening drive. Uyangalale has to feel pretty good about stuff right now. BT Potter punches home the point. 12 plays, 75 yards and 443. You want to get your quarterback comfortable? Got a better way than that? Let him run around, get a couple hits, get comfortable, and let him finish the drive and make a guy miss. My goodness. You think because he's such a big guy and he doesn't have athleticism, 6'4", 235, put his foot in the ground and leave a defender grasping for air? I'll tell you this. The interesting part for me is it went almost to the script yeah. Streeter talked about yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Early throws, yep. early run, feel the game, if you will. Yeah, let him let him get hit on his terms. Get the offensive line going, get him comfortable, make let him throw the passes that he wants to throw. 
And then the icing on the cake, he gets to score the first touchdown. So the run from Uyungle. And there'll be no return by the cards. And Louisville will play from its 25 yard line. And here comes the Malik show. And the last four games have been special for Satterfield's team. Yeah, this team is playing with a lot of confidence. After losing to Boston College, they went on a streak. Defense started playing lights out. Offense started putting up 35 points per game. And then the takeaways, 15 in the last four games. Cashed in for 52 points. Tyon Evans, the Tennessee transfer, gets the first call of the day. And the purple shirts are there to hold him for a yard. He ran into a stack of Clemson defenders and was able to squeeze back for one before Jeremiah Trotter Jr. made the tackle. And Malik Cunningham is a dynamic quarterback. Had a brilliant season last year with 21 touchdown passes, six picks. Not the same passing numbers this year because he's got a young receiving core. Chemistry hasn't quite been there. Here's a give to Evans. And he is turned back after maybe a step toward the 27-yard line by Barrett Carter. Clemson's going to play without Trenton Simpson today at linebacker. Maybe more Wade Wood as today. Maybe a little secondary adjustment along the way. And Rod, one of the things we're noticing, and we'll get Tiffany to maybe dive deeper on this for us in a moment, is Malik Cunningham playing with a padded glove on his left hand here. Yeah, I wonder how that impacts his ability to run with the football and ball security. Saw him in warm-ups. He threw the ball well. I'm just not certain about his ability to protect the football. Here is third down. Let's call it eight and change. Cunningham a rope to the left side. In and out of the hands of Tyler Hudson. The transfer from Central Arkansas, and that'll be three and out for the Tigers defense. Yeah, Nate Wiggins ate that route up. The right cornerback over there smelled the route completely, settled in, and look at this, drives right back on it. Receiver going back for the ball, Wiggins as well. This is a tremendous start for a Clemson defense that got pushed around last week. Yep. Mark Bassett punting it to Antonio Williams, a bobbly bouncer that Williams fields inside the 40 and will pick up about 10 yards on the return. So, for the fifth time this year, Clemson has got a touchdown on its opening drive, and the number 10 Tigers lead 7-0. Colonel Neil Putnam served 30 years in the U.S. Army, including 24 years as a Green Beret. Will led the Tigers down the hill today on this Military Appreciation Day at Clemson. And I'll tell you what, Colonel Putnam, 24 years as a Green Beret, and our thanks to he and every other veteran in this country for their service in protecting our freedoms. After a Tiger defense posted a three and out, Uwe Unglele picks up about four full on first down. They do a great celebration here, don't they? Yep. We have very flyover. To be here for this. make the play on Will Shipley. That's twice one in the purple's almost broken through. Yeah, we're seeing Clemson really use their tight ends in blocking that split zone action coming across and creating some holes. This is a, this is a manageable third down for Clemson. Oh my, Phil Moffa's come in with Shipley. Now they'll check him to the field on the right. Uwe Ungalale tried to shoot it through traffic to Ngata on third and short. Yeah, that, that's one that you'd like for him to to pull back and and go out to the outside to his running back Moffa, who came in, who was in the flat. So three and out for the Tiger yeah. defense after the Williams punt return, and our first look at Aiden Swanson. 
punting the football for Clemson, fourth in the ACC. And Braden Smith deep to receive for the cards. Swanson trying to flip it over. Smith signals for and will make the fair catch inside the 20 yard line. Don't forget tonight our ABC Saturday night football matchup. Undefeated ABC in the ESPN app. And Rod, you can't say enough about the job Sonny Dykes has oh. done in Fort Worth. Unexpected, unbelievable. And, you know, they've had some close ones, but look, they're undefeated and sitting at number four in the rankings. Cards will scrimmage from the 17 with their second possession. Jawar Jordan's first carry of the day. Back to the line of scrimmage and Boy, the guys in the in the orange hats are playing tough so far up front well, against the run. Well, one of the things that they're doing is they are moving that defensive front. Last week against Notre Dame, they were kind of sitting ducks, and Notre Dame double teamed them time after time. We've seen Clemson slant that defensive line, get movement so far today. There's a throw on the perimeter, and the tackle on Jordan Mage just over the 20 at the 22. And the reality of where this game is today. Clemson is already in the ACC championship, but Rob, the bigger picture, and granted, falling six slots and a lot of people writing them off here, but if you just keep winning, you never know what happens in front of you. Meanwhile, Louisville's trying to beat Clemson for the first time, period. Yeah, and remember, there's a 38 home game winning streak here, too. No player on this roster for Clemson has ever lost at home. The last time they lost at home, six years ago today. Cunningham, straight drop on third down. In trouble and sacked. Brian Brzee. Well, they ran a blitz, and Carter, number zero, was the guy coming in and running the stunt with Brzee. Good to see Brzee. Have some fun. He's had a tough year losing his sister and dealing with injuries. And he just loves playing. You see him circled here. He's going to come inside on that little twist. And also, you see Zero coming in with the blitz. A Cardinal team that only had four three and outs in their last two games have had two to start the afternoon. I don't feel like we've gotten the full Malik Cunningham yet. What a punt by Vassett. His longest of the year is 55 twice. This is certainly longer than that, but did he kick it too far? No, they angle Williams out across the way beyond the 30. Brian Brzee, the big sophomore from Damascus, Maryland, making a big play for the Tigers, who lead 7-0. And he is beloved by his teammates, according to players and coaches. He's never once complained about anything. And now he gets it on the perimeter. Goodness, Drew Sweeney picks up eight on the throw from Uwe you know, Pretty when, good scheme from Brandon Streeter here. Yeah, yeah, he's doing a great job of playing to his quarterback's strengths. I was going to say when Uwe Angelale was pulled from the Syracuse game, never complained. Said it was the right thing to do. And then last week said, I, I didn't play well. Never blame receivers or offensive line. The clap gets the play going. Look at Shipley fire straight ahead. Rod against a unit in Louisville that has been stingy, obviously created a lot of turnovers. Clemson is quick to the snap, quick to the punch on the run game here. Yeah, they're not giving Louisville's defense time to assess the formations and to think about their adjustments. You see Louisville looks over to the sideline to get their play call, and now they're just trying to get lined up. Brian Brown has done a terrific job coordinating the cards defense. He has. Louis Ungalale on first down. Firing and that's caught Antonio Williams inside the 25 to the 20. Now this is about the Clemson offensive line picking up the pressure. Leon Galilei had plenty of time. And here you see man coverage and just beats that route. That's Antonio Williams with the perfect route against man coverage. But it all started with the protection picking up the blitz. Williams, a true freshman from Irma, who enrolled here in June. Not one of these guys that came during the spring. And now look at Phil Moffa. Bang away inside at 230 pounds for the Tigers, who now have a first and goal to go. Yeah, good running backs know how to make the first guy miss. 
and how to deliver a blow and how to hit and spin. Louis Ungolale, quick throw to Williams. He tried to dive for it and pretty good play by Jarvis Brownlee, the Florida straight transfer with MJ Griffin there to bang him out of bounds. How about that arm strength? And th there was no lower body involved with that at all. This is just raise up and throw, much like a second baseman would be turning a double play. Didn't know I knew a little baseball, huh? No, you did well there. <laughs> Very nice. At the back, the quick throw to yeah, first. I yeah, like it. Yeah. Two tight ends to the right. That's Allen who's flexed off the ball at the top of your screen. And boy, the cards rally straight ahead. Benjamin Perry. Yeah, he read that yep. right off the bat. And Maffa was stopped at the door. Now where's Shipley? Yeah. And this this would be Shipley time down around the goal line. But he came off the field a couple of plays ago. Yeah, right after the pass play a moment ago to Williams. Yeah. Again, Clemson is heavy quarterback run down here. Louisville knows that. They'll be looking for quarterback design runs, zone read, quarterback draw. Here's Uri Ungolale. Pressure coming, trying to lob it to Williams. And a lot of contact with Quincy Riley, no flag. It's a good no call. Pass so, interference is the most difficult call for refs to make. Fourth and goal, and that brings B.T. Potter out. That is a good stand for Louisville down in the red zone and keep being able to hold off Louisville here when they had first down and plenty of opportunity. Potter 15 to 17 on the year. Longest is 46 against NC State. This is right in the neighborhood of 20. This is a PAT. Yes, it is. But a trickier angle. Yeah, a little bit. And BT Potter fires it through, and it's a 10 0 Tiger lead. Let's go to the college football studio. Matt Barry. Good afternoon, sir. Checking in with you to let you know what's going on around the country. ABC, Michigan, and Nebraska, and some peak Big Ten weather. UCF Tulane, the bid one in the American on ESPN2. It looks as if we got a scoop and score situation for Tulane. He's going to get brought down just inside the 30. NC State up on BC, 14-6 ACC Network in Miami and Georgia Tech on ESPN+. Plus. That's the 3.30 window. You guys enjoy. All right, thanks, Matt. Look forward to you and Joey and Coach Mullen. I've been waiting all season to find a reason to find Matt at Buck. But I haven't come <laughs> up with a reason to find him yet. You want me to work with you on that Please. tonight? Okay. Maybe we can get him a slip up today. That'll cost you a dollar. Don't forget, <laughs> this season, our good friends at Allstate helping celebrate every field goal and an extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the University Scholarship Fund. Thank you to Allstate. And here's Jawar Jordan taken down at the 20 after he fielded the rolling kick. Sponsorship of ESPN's College Football. Ball at the 20 here and kind of see where Louisville is as a team now, don't you, Ryan? Yeah, it's time to find out what Malik Cunningham can do. A couple of series, they protected him. Now they have to find out what he can do with that cast or whatever it is on his left hand. Here is Cunningham trying to get the screen to Evans. Barrett Carter Man. right there from the linebacking spot to make the play he for is, the Tigers behind the line. He is everywhere. But getting back to Cunningham, it looks like, wait, they've got a guy down there. Yeah, it's Evans, I believe, who's yeah. shaken up the running back who's transferred from Tennessee. They're already down a couple of running backs. Yeah, Jalen Mitchell, Travion Cooley Rod, not with the cards on the trip here. Yeah. Jawar Jordan, we saw a moment ago on the kick return, and they may have to go to the uh, Georgia Nichols, Georgia freshman Maurice Turner, who's got only 10 carries. Well, you know, this the, season. the plan coming in was to have a mixture of Evans and Jordan. You know, they've spent most of the season using a running back by committee. Mm. But as you mentioned, you know, no Mitchell, no Cooley. So they only had two available. And it's hard to tell what what happened to him with such that pile. Maybe an ankle down there. And he's been fighting injury on and off throughout the season. And the young man from Hartsville, South Carolina, started his career, we told you, at Tennessee. Scott Satterfield told us this week he was keyed up for the game. It was almost not a 
it was almost a whoa, not a go yeah. situation yeah. in terms of just the emotionals for Tyon Evans. And you hope this doesn't take him out for the remainder of the day, knowing that uh, I'm sure he's got a lot of family and friends here at the ball game. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep this in mind. The leading rusher for Louisville is Malik Cunningham. Mm. He hasn't run one yet. He was sacked for a loss, but he has not carried the ball. And again, I'm not sure how comfortable he is with that, that cast on his non-throwing hand, his left hand. But they're going to have to find out what he can do. Yeah. And they, they've really protected him the first couple of series. But, but sooner or later, and it's getting later, in a hurry, they're going to have to find out. Jawar Jordan's had 10 or more carries in three of the last four games. Cunningham's going to throw here. And, boy, falling off with 6'4 defensive end K.J. Henry to get a hand in the passing lane on a ball intended for Tyler Hudson. Look, this defense has been on point. And they were embarrassed last week by Notre Dame. You know, they admitted they blew a lot of assignments. And just look at K.J. Henry, six foot four, as you mentioned, dropping into the flat. That's a difficult throw to get over him. His dad was an All-America defensive back at the NAIA level in the late 80s. He'd have been proud of K.J. to flag that down. Passed down some good genes. <laughs> yes, he did. Louisville is minus four total offense with less than two to go in the first period. They give it to Jordan. Got a block. First down and more. Jawar Jordan into Tiger territory. Perfect play call against the Clemson Blitz. They picked it up, and Jordan got beyond that first wave. And just watch. There you see the pressure coming, and then a great job blocking inside to spring him out. R.J. Mickens tracked him down after 45 yards. A that's one you put on the board during the week, and you go, if we catch him in this blitz, we're going to break this. Fresh set of downs, and maybe new life for Louisville. Trailing 10-0 and in trouble and dropped. R.J. Mickens, who made the tackle a moment ago to save the touchdown on Jordan, drops Cunningham behind the line and a loss of right at six on the play. And you notice Cunningham did not want to put that ball in his left hand. Now, it's, you see the pressure coming from the outside here. Good pressure by Clemson, but, but that ball stayed in his right hand the entire time. And then when they went to help him up right, he said, not the left hand, yeah. pull me up with the right. Yeah, he, he's probably in more pain than everyone's willing to admit. Second down and long after the sack. Here's a throw on the perimeter, and that's Hudson. Tyler Hudson slips further down the far side for a first down in Tiger territory to the 24. And so we saw Cunningham before the game throw the ball, and he was throwing it perfectly well, just like this. So we don't think there's an issue with him getting the ball out there, good timing on it. But whether he can hang on to it in traffic and protect the football. Heights plus Dustin Poirier takes on Michael Chandler. Prelim, prelim start at 8 Eastern on ESPN News. Follow the main card at 10 Eastern on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. Sign up at ESPNPlus.com slash PPV to see 281 tonight from Manhattan. Start quarter two, and Louisville's Cunningham wants to throw. He'll check it out into the flat, and this is Jordan against Jeremiah Trotter, who slings him out of bounds in the neighborhood of the 15-yard line. Yeah, good check down throw. This is the area where Louisville can get matchups on the safeties. You get a slot guy on a safety and take a shot at the end zone. But Malik Cunningham looks there. It's not there, so he comes off of it. And so Clemson did a nice job of reading the scouting port, anticipating that Louisville would take the shot down there, and Malik Cunningham came off of it. Tyon Evans has come back in, and they have plugged a fullback. Tight end Isaac Martin at 251 pounds in the game, and they're going to hand to Evans. Strong run, right side, touchdown for the Cardinals. And off to number seven. Wow. Shades of last week. Basically two tight ends, one in the backfield, and they ran along that right side and got a perfect block on Tyler Davis, and then also Jeremy, uh, Jeremiah Trotter, 54, comes across, can't get there. He gets picked up also. 
And again, when you have a double team, and this is what Clemson worked on all week, you have to scream around it and get into that that uh, that gap. Well, Gerard Jordan had the big run, Rod. Yeah. Tyon Evans gets the touchdown. Yeah. That is a big, big answer for Louisville. James Turner's point is good. Cards on the board early in quarter two. Behind the running of Tyon Evans and his sixth touchdown of the year. Louisville on the board here. The Tyon Evans touchdown run. Clemson leading 10-7. We're early in quarter two at Frank Howard Field. And Will Shipley has returned to the Clemson lineup. And he's going to handle the kick return here inside the five. And out across the 20 goes Shipley. But Rod, a big play for Scott Satterfield's team a moment ago, huh? Yeah, just like you draw it up on the build. This is a nationwide pocket protection play. All you have to do is have the right side of your line blocked down, and then a kick out creates a gap. And then your hero, the fullback, Isaac Martin, regularly a tight end, comes in through that gap, and he hunts himself a linebacker, and he finds Jeremiah Trotter. That's your hero. Yeah, you get the touchdown. Tight end, Isaac Martin. Well, and Martin, the key guy there, from Louisville went to Trinity at 6'1 and 251 and you see the six plays the two three and outs to start the game I don't know what the rest of the afternoon holds but that <laughs> Jawar that Jawar Jordan play Rod yeah ends up looming large for Scott Satterfield there was an offside call on Louisville and Clemson has elected to push Scott Satterfield's team back five and have them kick it again here yeah how about Satterfield the first few weeks of the season Looked like he might not last the rest of the season with Louisville. Fire this one away, and Shipley will touch a knee at the 25 after the Tigers are pinned back. Don't forget ACC Network tonight in prime time. Also available on the ESPN app, by yeah, the way. I was going to say Louisville lost two of their first three and then lost a game to Boston College, and <laughs> Louisville fans went nuts. Here is Phil Maffa. Look at this, carrying three white shirts for about five yards on first down. Powerful running. That's the second time we've seen him do that today. But that that slow start for Louisville mm. uh, created a little bit of a hot seat for Satterfield. Yeah, it, it was interesting because the loss at BC, and they also lost Cunningham in that game. Yep. So they went to Virginia with Brock Doman mm -hmm. going the distance at quarterback. And then, Rod, the, the game that may have changed everything for them is the win at Pitt at home. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's a throw in the flat, and this is Shipley. Look at that play. Nice look at that play. That's Brownlee again, the corner. That's as good as you can make it happen. That is defeating the block of the wide receiver and putting yourself in position to make an open field tackle. That is textbook. So now all of a sudden, third down. Yeah, good job. And now third down. Again, remember, Louisville likes to pressure on third and five, third and six and more. Showing it now. Man coverage. Snap to DJ. Quick throw. Antonio Williams slips down. He'll be a yard shy, maybe a little less at the 34. Makins yeah, that, was there for Louisville. Yeah, that's his feeling like you don't have enough time. Receiver cuts the route short. And they're going to go for it here. We're seeing more and more of this in your own territory. Luke Price, kind of an extra tight end to work with Allen on that left wing. Clemson is six for eight on fourth down this year. This is a big one. You don't get this one. You change momentum. And you Play give Louisville a short field. Yep. And a timeout taken. Yeah. So that was they, they wanted to see if Louisville flinch. Yeah. Yeah. 30 seconds. So a three-point lead and a timeout for Dabo Sweeney. Let's check out this afternoon's Aflac trivia question. Nebraska. Nebraska. I may not be right about I, that. I, I would think Nebraska and I think um, Alabama. Those are the two that would come to mind. 
Clemson's going to punt out of the timeout for Dabo Sweeney. Because Nebraska had a heck of a streak during the 90s. 90 includes, 90 on, though, includes like the Southern Cal teams, the early 2000s. Yeah, but they weren't that good then. <laughs> Until Matt Leinart and Reggie Bush. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Fair catch called for at the 21 by Braden Smith. So it's a 45-yard punt. Here is the answer to the Affleck trivia question. And look, the game prep got us the Oklahoma answer, so we're hitting 500 regardless yeah. here. The question is, are we hitting 1,000? We want perfection. Okay, so who are the other two teams to have a longer home win streak? Ah. Whoa, Gilmore, you're the man. Yeah. 47 straight for the Huskers in the early 90s. Thank you very much. Well done, Rob. Cards trailing three from the 23, and Jordan on the start of this fourth possession picks up two. So second down, and let's we're, say he got two and a half. We're seeing Clemson play those double teams a little bit better inside sure. than they did against Notre Dame. You know, when, when a guy gets doubled like that, he can't stand tall and allow himself to be pushed back and then allow that guy to come off and block someone else. Going to try Jordan again, and not that time. Put his foot in the ground and got amongst them. Barrett Carter led the way. Yeah, this is a much better effort inside from Tyler Davis and Brazil. Those, those guys are playing, you know, tough enough to get everything right back. So third and nine for the Ville. Louisville came in ninth in the ACC, 74th nationally under 39%, but 10 of their last 25. And Wins against James Madison and Wake Forest. Single coverage up top. Up top. Malik's going to carry it here to the perimeter. And he'll be shoved out of bounds, angled out by Tyler Venables. Put it in his right hand the whole way, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he's comfortable with the football in his left hand at all. I mean, you can just, you can tell when he runs, he's not willing to switch the ball. He doesn't grab it very hard with that left hand. It's really limiting him in the running game. They, they've only rushed him a couple of times, three times to be exact, really twice in one sack. Bassett, who had a season-best 68-yarder earlier in this half, will punt it to Antonio Williams. And Louisville trailing by three. Wobbly kick, and Williams gets away from it, smartly, I might add, and the cards will down it right at Clemson's 30 and change. 43-yard punt, takes us to a timeout. Number 10, Clemson in front by three. You put your dreams on hold. Well, at the end of the first quarter today, Captain Nathaniel Horton surprised his family with his return home from a nine-month deployment in the Middle East. And he arrived here as part of military appreciation today at Clemson. And I'm not crying. You're crying. Oh, man. That's you. Every time you see it, right? Not me. I'm not crying. So welcome home, Captain Horton, and thank you for your service to our country. He's just never failed to get you, you know? Yeah, amazing the sacrifice the families, let alone the individuals, the men and women who protect our freedom in this country. Phil Mappa is the running back with Uwe Ungalale off the Tiger 31. Clemson with three and out in their last possession. Here's DJ back to the run game, and he'll get five on first down. We've not seen much of Shipley since he apparently injured himself, you know, pass blocking back in the first quarter. Saw him on a kick return, but not much from the line of scrimmage. Yep. 33 yards on a half dozen carries for Uwe Ungalale here in the opening frame. Now Maffa. It's a 
It's a different kind of back, too, Rod. Moffa 6'1", 230, more north-south. Get the pad straight, the whole nine here. And not the receiver that Shipley is. Here's a look back at Shipley in that first quarter. He's in pass protection. And watch, you know, he takes a hit here. And it looks like he got, you know, a little banged up a little bit. Dorian Jones was the guy coming in on him. Third down and three. Hoffa checking to the field. Here's Uwe Unglele. Stepped out of one. Bangs away at two. And did he get enough for it? I believe he did. To the 42-yard line. Momo Sonogo. The transfer from Ole Miss who's been just terrific in this grad year but for the fighting, college. Fighting for those extra couple of yards. He's taking some shots, you know. You have to be careful about the number of shots that he takes. But, man, he fought for that one. Fresh set of downs off the Clemson 42. Pressure coming. Back foot throw. Brennan stole a terrific catch. And a Tiger first down. And Uwe Underwood hung in there, Rod. All the stuff you talk about that the quarterbacks can do, the great ones, you have to be able to throw the ball from different platforms and when you're not set and settled. And, man, he's backing up and put that one out perfectly. Arm strength and touch. Withstood the force of Diaby, who was crashing down yeah. for a 26-yard throw. Here's Williams on the perimeter and a terrific play by Clark. <laughs> Keytrell Clark read that like he heard it called in the huddle. You know, really, I'm going to lay lay. You see him make throws like this, and you just go, man, this talent is amazing. Watch as he puts this ball out there just nicely, perfectly done for his receiver while he's being knocked back. Well, the Tigers lose four on the terrific play by Keytrell Clark. Shipley back in the ball game. He and Maffa split with Uwe Unglele. White lock down to three on the Tigers. And they get it snapped. Nope. No, they did not. Dabo Sweeney punches his second time out with seven and a half to go. 10-7 Tigers in plus territory. When we continue. All right, Matt, thank you. More to come at the half. Here is Uwe Ungalale with Shipley in the backfield. Second down after the play behind the line by the cards and looking for Adam Randall, the freshman from Myrtle Beach. Never had a chance. Great press coverage on that side. Single man coverage over there. And there was never a chance for Randall to get free. Could not beat it. Now you've got a third and long. And, you know, it feels like Clemson has dominated this game. Right. But it's a three-point game. They got 200 yards of offense unofficially. Louisville under 100. Tigers with 11 first downs. But you're right, Rod. It's a three-point margin. And third and 14 here. Four down territory. Cards bringing pressure. Uri on the line. Bump the ball. And Louisville says they have it, and they do. Now that is, that's just ball security. Yaya Diaby yeah. the, the, balls on top of it. Yeah, I mean, but that was Leon Galile holding the ball down. Look where the ball is. It's down low and in perfect position for, position for Diaby, also known as Little Baby, to make that play. And your rap music video. You're still working with the little baby thing, right? Your Sir Abdullah, by the way, <laughs> raked it out. Yes, I know exactly who you're talking about. I know you're all over it. So the turnover continues the upward trend of the Cards defense and gives Louisville possession at its 46, trailing three. They have no right to be in this ballgame. Cunningham, this is Hudson, and a good shoot top tackle. Handled by the uh, Tigers there, and it was uh, R.J. Mickens, Tiffany. 
Yeah, you know, going back to that fumble recovery by Yaya, I talked to him this week, and he said that after the Boston College game, he got with Momo, and he told him, hey, we got to change something ASAP. So Momo went to Coach Satterfield, and they were able to put together an all-players team meeting. And from there, he said it's been locked in ever since they have, just trying to play for one another, and that's been all the difference, Wes. It, I tell you what, it's a remarkable storyline to winning four straight and five of six for these cards. More aggressive, more takeaways. Cunningham wants to launch. Now in trouble, will throw it up, and it bounced in front of the intended receiver, Hudson, because K.J. Henry was chasing Malik Cunningham, and the cards quarterback is slow to get to his feet here. Yeah, see how he protects that left hand? And K.J. Henry... Brought a lot of pressure that time. And you see that Cunningham had to protect himself from falling. Now, that left hand was down there a little bit. Big third down and seven. Again, if you are Louisville, the matchup you want is your slot receiver against the safeties, if you can get that. Cards are going to bang a timeout here. First charge timeout. Louisville, 30 seconds. So Cunningham, Tiffany now clearly favoring this uh, padded glove on his left hand. It is a soft shell brace, then the glove over it, and then the padding. I did speak with offensive coordinator Lance Taylor ahead of the game. He told me they're gonna be keeping an eye on that left hand, just hoping he doesn't get banged up too much. Now, when I talk with Malik, ahead of the game i asked him about that hand he smiled and said oh i'm good but clearly it's affecting him just a little bit today yeah he's not good he's not right i mean coming into this game he was the leading rusher in attempts by a lot 103 carries next highest was 74. he has three carries today one was a sack and he's only thrown the ball eight times so they're trying to keep him protected and have him for the second half, but they've not really gone to him to do much on offense. Well, and, and to be honest, to your point a moment ago, all these things stacked against him, and they only trail three. Yeah. But the silver lining, and I, we were talking about this before the game, the silver lining for Louisville is it's not like if Cunningham comes out, you go to a guy that hadn't taken a snap. Right. Brock right. Dolman started and won the game at Virginia and has played in each of the ensuing games after them. Well, keep in mind, this is a veteran offensive line that believes they get better in the second half and can wear you down. So being close speaks a lot for Louisville. Third down, Cunningham will throw, and it is caught inbounds in front of the Clemson bench at the 41-yard line. Marshawn Ford, the big tight end, with his first grab of the day. A really big third down pickup. You see Cunningham was able to hang in there and get something on the ball again. Based on what we saw in warm-ups and what we've seen in the game, throwing is not an issue. Running with the ball, protecting it, that's the issue. You see Ford, of course. He went to Ballard in Louisville. And here are the cards at the Clemson 41 after the wobbly throw to Ford. And that's Evans, and he's not going to get very far. Clemson rallied there. Well, Tigers had Tyler Davis, Jeremiah Trotter in the fray. Louisville opened the game by trying to run the Notre Dame playbook and run inside with a couple of double teams. Didn't get much success. And then they moved it outside to try to run off tackle, but had a touchdown run off of it. Tyon Evans in the backfield. Here's Cunningham now breaking free. Far side, turns the corner. Wood as the linebacker was trying to help out. And he will step out of bounds across the way at the 38. I think that was the most natural he looked running with the ball. Of course, he was going to the right side, but he looked confident, fluent, willing to make a couple moves. And we're cross midfield, right? And so Satterfield told us once he gets cross midfield, it's four down territory. Here's Gerard Jordan. The new rule I'm trying to get adopted. Once you cross midfield, you can't punt. Let me know how that goes, would you? <laughs> Jawar Jordan's checked back in. They empty the backfield. Braden Smith, double pass, launching deep and threw it into no man's land. Yeah, Clemson didn't fall for it. Miles Murphy, by the way, peeled off the edge. The big 6'5 junior 
was right in the face of Braden Smith when he cut it loose. Yeah, but Makuba, the safety number one, really, you'll see him go back deep in the middle. Makuba, number one, will take away everything. There's no one is biting up, cheating up on the throw. Makuba in the middle of the field seals it. Nowhere to go down the field with the receivers on the trickeration. So the fumble does not convert to points, and Williams will wait on another punt of Mark Bassett with 438 to play. And again, an end over end kick that will hit and skip into the end zone for the touchback. So Clemson will scrimmage from its 20. All right, Matt, thanks very much. Will Shipley the first carry and the ball loose and I think Clemson was able to get back on it. It looked like Joe Engata found the rock at the 26, but Will Shipley coughed it up, Rock. I, I wonder if that arm is bothering him a bit. You see, he, go, he grabs that left hand and that's the hand that he hurt pass blocking in the first quarter and he just gives his ball up right away. And immediately afterwards, he grabbed his left hand. Here goes Shipley now. Clutched it in his right hand and then ran for about 11 yards and a first down before Brownlee made the tackle. But well, they're not going to win this game without more Shipley. You know, prior to this drive, he only had five carries. And you see the good block inside getting him to the edge. He's going to need a lot more touches. Three to the field for the Tigers. And Uwe Ungulale. Oh, he faked the run. Now going to shoot the ball to Allen. Midfield and another Clemson first down. Well, a little fake quarterback counter. And get your tight end, Davis Allen, out there in the flat. Clemson only had 32 yards in this second quarter prior to the start of this drive, yeah. Rod. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's been a, a unique kind of offense for them. They looked very good for his quarter. And then the confidence started going to Louisville on defense. Picked up their third and fourth first downs of this quarter. Here's Uwe Ungolle and kind of a patient wait for the run, if you will, and got yeah. out a couple of yards, so you know, it'll be second and eight. It, it, just watching Louisville defensively, you can see the confidence growing. They're secondary. They feel confident against the receivers. They don't believe that they can run by them. They're willing to you know, dial up the blitz a little bit more. And by now they know the Tigers are playing without Bo Collins today. Yes. Who's got five touchdown catches on the year and would be one of the Clemson vertical threats for sure. Yeah, man across the board, safety in the hole. Quick throw that time, Spectre the grab. Falls inside the 40, down to the 37 of the cards. That is a great, great throw. Here's the other piece too. Dabo Sweeney knows he's got 218 to go. One time out, and Louisville gets the ball start second half. Try to get a a two for one, get a score here, and then come back out and get another score to start the third quarter. Brandon Spector did not have a catch in the last three games. He's come up big here in this first half. We Ungole on first and ten. A lot of pocket here, and he will throw it away. For a moment, it looked like Williams might have broken free deep on a route for the Tigers and I think that's what five was holding on to the football for. Yeah. Were you surprised at how patient Dabo was yesterday in our, our chat? I mean about the status of the team and and also being out of the right. mix in the playoff. Yeah I thought it was interesting that the very simplistic phrase of back to work. Yeah. I think also two rock that's four and three mark a year ago mm -hmm. when everybody thought the dynasty was collapsing if you will and then they rolled off the you know, nine straight to finish the year with double figure. They got, you know, they were four and three, and then they finished with the, what, six straight to go, ten and three to finish the year. Yeah, that yeah. was the, to me, that kind of personified the bridge a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so the loss the other night, well, very disappointing. First loss to an unranked team in 11 years. I, to me, I think he's, he understands the bigger picture here, and he knows if they stay focused, there's a lot of traffic in front of them. Yeah, yeah. And he's not counting on the chaos, but he thinks that right. they can reset and be okay the remainder of the season. Five wide. Uwe Ungulale going to take a shot for Shipley, and there'll be a flag thrown from behind the play. 
And it looked like Minkins is going to get tagged for the pass interference here with Shipley. I don't know about that. You got one official down in the end zone who called it a, a good play, and one who was back pass along the line of scrimmage called it pass interference. Again, it is the most difficult thing to call. And when you have mutual combat, both guys with their arms out, usually it doesn't get called unless there is one who takes advantage. I think that's one where you keep your flag in your pocket. So 15 yards to the Louisville 20 here with 107 to go. Moffa into the ball game to spell Shipley. DJ, quick throw. EJ Williams right at about 10 yards. Close to another first down. Plenty of time. We have a timeout. 58, 57 seconds. Keep your composure if you're DJ at quarterback right now. Clemson two for two in the red zone today. This is Moffa at the five. 42 seconds left to go as he's pulled down. First and goal. I'm not sure that he should have given that one. I think Leon Galele could have walked into the end zone yeah. if he kept it. And come right back with that play. Clock starts, of course. DJ looks left, throws, caught. Antonio Williams, the touchdown. What a great two-minute drive by Clemson. And if you are Louisville, you're wondering, how do you let Williams get inside when you're bringing pressure? The one thing you want to do is force the quarterback to throw the ball up with air and not a line across the middle of the field. Ten. So good job by Williams to work his way inside. Antonio Williams, third touchdown catch of the year. 10 plays, 80 yards in under four minutes. Yeah, if you're bringing pressure defensively, Cardinal Sin, you do not let the receiver inside. Watch here. Oh, he goes for the okie doke and plays outside. Never, ever, ever go outside. Let the receiver go outside if you must, but never let him inside. And what a great move by Williams to freeze him and then get inside. This young freshman. Produces the touchdown at the back end, pushes the advantage to 10 at 17 to 7. Let's take a look at the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. Student sections across the country are competing to be the Live Moss student section of the year all season long. This crowd here at Frank Howard Field at Memorial Stadium will give anybody a run for their money. They have a good time, don't they? And they got here early. Yeah. They got here early, early, Rod. <laughs> Try, trying to get into this stadium three hours before the How'd game. How'd that go today? A uh, real challenge. A real challenge. I only try and go a couple of miles. <laughs> it's like an hour to get in. <laughs> Potter. Cannon shot. There'll be no return for the cards. He'll scrimmage from their 25-yard line. Don't forget another big Sunday in the National Football League NFL countdown. Starts our coverage in an all-access app. And then Monday night. Fly, Eagles, fly. And, of course, always on the ESPN app. How good is that to see Jalen Hurts doing so well? Oh, Nick Sirianni's done a terrific job. Here's a throw in Braden Smith to catch. He will fall down out of bounds in front of Nate Wiggins. A couple With, of timeouts, yep. 27 seconds. I think we're going to try another play and see what they get out of it. And if so, they'll continue to try to get something done. If they don't get anything on this play, I think they'll pack it in and go to the locker room. Second down and about six here for Louisville. Cunningham, middle of the field, and this is Braden Smith tackled there just beyond the 40. And Makuba the stop. Now, to your point, though, here, from a management standpoint, 20 seconds. One timeout now as they burn one. And James Turner, who's kicked a 50-yarder two years ago against Syracuse, and in his career is 14 to 25 from 40 or more. Well, we saw him in warm-ups kicking 55-yarders. Yep. And had a little room to spare. So the cards huddle around. You see Scott Satterfield 
talking this thing all the way through. That's Lance Taylor, the offensive coordinator who's in the big huddle. First year with Scott Satterfield. And Scott Satterfield, you don't have to tell him at 49 years of age what's happening. He grew up in Hillsborough, North Carolina, right on mm -hmm. Tobacco Road. Yep. In fact, he sold soft drinks at Wallace Wade Stadium no way. as a kid to raise money for his youth <laughs> football program at Hillsborough. That is awesome. So when he had great success at Appalachian, and of course, came back to Louisville, but he knew good and well when he took the job as a member of the ACC mm -hmm. what this was going to be about and who was in charge, and that those guys in the orange hats. Well, he needs 20 yards now to have a shot at field goal. Cunningham downfield, and it is caught. That's Tyler Hudson right over the 49 yard line with 13 seconds to go. You got time, and you have timeouts. Box starts, though. I would have used a timeout there. Here is Cunningham. Looking to make a throw again, sliding catch, that's Hudson. And there's the timeout with two seconds left. Down to, yeah, the one timeout. That's it. Yep. Well, this will give you. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Oh my. It is not the hand, it is now the lower leg, it looks like on the right side for Malik Cunningham. He has been gutting it out this first half. See what happened at the end of this play. It's just he gets rolled up on. Yeah. But he got the ball out. Now this will be about a 57 yarder. And again, in warmups, JT, James Turner, looked pretty good. And he was he was kicking in this direction in warmups. So he ought to feel pretty comfortable, confident. Now everything he booted that was over 40 was primarily from the middle of the field. Turner is uh, still over in that bench area. Dabo Sweeney has a timeout left, and in fact, Louisville's not sending the field goal unit oh. on. They're gonna play offense. Oh, this is just your Hail Mary time. Man. Yep. You don't have time for anything else. Which is, which is the better risk? A 57-yard field goal or a Hail Mary? Hoping for a pass interference call. And there's the Clemson timeout. So the Tigers go ahead and burn their last with two seconds to go. Let's take a look. State and Michigan will play each other, and Michigan's non-conference schedule, should they lose, is not compelling. Right. And of course, Tuesday night, we'll get the next unveiling of the college football playoff rankings in between the doubleheader of the Champions Classic from Indianapolis. And James Turner, the Cardinal place kicker, will not get a chance here. This is the Hail Mary for Malik Cunningham. Hail Mary or hoping for a pass interference call. Three receivers to the field, one here to the boundary. Cunningham is going to keep it and run. Remember, he had a big run a year ago. He'll work his way to the far side. Cunningham still on his feet. He'll give out a gas and then fumble the ball, and the half will come to an end. Malik Cunningham is down yeah. on the final play of the half. Yeah, he, he, he did not go down well. And the one thing that you don't want to have happen if you're Louisville is lose Malik Cunningham Will Shipley has not been a big factor, and they need to get him involved in the second half. Well, he got a little banged up as well. Yeah. Phil Moffa's come in, Antonio Williams has caught a touchdown pass, but Louisville's had chances too, Rod. Yeah, that's exactly right. And they need to take advantage of him in the second half. He really haven't had much from Malik Cunningham in the first half. You know, I think he was banged up. He wasn't himself. We'll see what the second half holds. Well, the kick is through the end zone, so there's no return. And let's check with Tiffany Blackman. Hi, Tiff. Hey guys, I just spoke with Louisville coach Scott Satterfield coming out of the half. He told me that backup quarterback Brock Doman will start this second half. And guys, I just saw Malik Cunningham walk off. He went to the locker room. Now Satterfield said he fell on his right hand. That is his throwing hand. So he injured that hand. It was not the left hand that is already injured. So that is why we are seeing Brock Doman out here now starting the second half, guys. So here is the junior from Colorado Springs who went 
17 of 30 for 275, a touchdown and two picks at Virginia, but got the road win and has played spots in the four following games. And Brzee almost intercepted his first pass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he put that one right there, and Brzee is kicking himself for having dropped it. He knew he had a pick six there. Uh, Doman is a well-traveled quarterback, four schools in five years. And as you mentioned, played well in that law in that win on the road at Virginia, but opens up with what could have been a pick six. So Renato Brown and Brian Brzee look like they were boxing for the offensive rebound. And there's a look at the Doman day in Charlottesville after Cunningham suffered a concussion in the one point loss at Boston College the week prior. Second down, a little bit of a busted play. Doman puts it up for grabs and it's caught going out of bounds. Heck of a catch by Amari Huggins Bruce. First time we've called number nine's yeah, name tremendous today. Tremendous catch. Now, now, Doman isn't the runner that Malik Cunningham is. Few people are. But a healthy Doman can probably create more and throw better than Cunningham. Cunningham was just laboring the entire first half, battling the left hand and now the right hand. So maybe Doman gives them a chance to run a little bit more of the offense. Clemson took Mickens off the field. So they've cast out of the nickel. And here is Evans trying to get something on third and short, and the Tigers rallied there. Oh, man, that is Brian Brzee. He and Wade Woodaz, the linebacker, on the stop. You know, you, you think about everything that Brzee has been through this offseason. We mentioned earlier losing his 15-year-old sister to brain cancer a few weeks ago, and then having injury after injury. And he gets his joy with being with his teammates and being on the field. And he is playing on fire tonight. Yep. There's no question about it. Fourth three and out, by the way, posted by the Tigers defensively in the first seven possessions by the Cards. Vassett, who's had a 68-yarder, hammers that one. And a fair catch call for by Antonio Williams. So, 53-yard punt. Let's check out our game track. Brought to you by Papa John's over the first 30 minutes here today. Can to still be in this thing. Shipley joins Uwe Ungalale for first down and 10. And Will will pick up a couple, and a flag gets tossed in as the play, play was whistled down. And Jeff Heaser is the referee today, as assigned by the Atlantic Coast Conference. Personal foul, face mask, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Oh, Diaby. Yeah. I mean, you can you can tell Shipley isn't isn't correct, isn't right because you know they haven't Ooh. used him in the passing attack very much, and he only has eight carries. Will might be the shield. Eight carries. 45 yards and out of the ball game comes the sophomore from Weddington, North Carolina. Here's the toss, and this is Moffa turning the corner. Bill Moffa, it's a big man with the football into Louisville territory. Goes 26 for the Tigers. And he's going to get more touches with Shipley in and out of the lineup. And as you mentioned earlier, a little bit more powerful, bigger back, can run through tackles. First and 10, ball at the 43. Play fake to Moffa. Long throw and a strong catch at the back end by Antonio Williams. That is a confident throw. Leon Galile really showed you his arm on that one. I mean, he had to put that over a receiver and a defender to get it to his intended target. Man. That's confidence. Shoved out of bounds by Jones. Tigers now put both backs in the game again. Rod, we've seen this about four times, I think, in the first half. This, I don't want to call it a wishbone, but it looks a little bit like it with the quarterback and the yeah, little two backs. A little inverted wishbone. Louis Ungalale, very patient, tried to get it to E.J. Williams, and there was a collision with Jarvis Brownlee around the 20-yard line. Dabo Sweeney among many at the Tiger bench that thought, there should be a flag thrown on the cards. Well, if the ball isn't in the air, 
you can have contact with the receiver. And I, I can read Debo's lips. He's saying he was pulling him down. <laughs> that would be a hold if both of them were not involved. Second and the full 10 after the incomplete pass. DJ, quick throw again and a tight window to Engada. And you can see that DJ really is comfortable throwing that out. I mean, that's been his go-to throw today. Uyangalale really has a strong arm. Yep. Has shown a lot of character this season. Didn't worry about tough game against Notre Dame. Syracuse came right back. Uyangalale got a hurry and threads the needle to Antonio Williams, and it's a catch at the 21. And the cards. Had Sonogo bearing down on Uwe Underlay. You know, when you have confidence, when you are playing loose and free, you can just thread the needle like that. And he is definitely playing loose and free. Look at this throw here. It just really gets it in there. Perfect. Great pressure by the cards, and it's Abdullah who is in his pocket when he cut it loose. This will be a, a third and short. Looks like Shipley's back in the game. It's the first and ten. Mm -hmm. Yep, put it at the 21. Yep. There's the official announcement. Well, what will the score mean here for Clemson, Rod? Up ten already. Yeah. Three and out by the defense, and here's Williams in the orbit. Now he's going to throw it back for DJ. Caught it at the 20, got a block, 10, first and goal, and a marker thrown. In fact, three flags now on the play. And this might be a hold on Jordan McFadden trying to block for his quarterback. And <laughs> look at Sonogo and Uwe Ungalale laughing as the big Cinco gets to his feet. Like, really? <laughs> You're running as a receiver out here. <laughs> Jeff Heaser's crew. Yeah. Everybody saw this one. Greatest day, right? I yeah. love the play. Look how far back Sonogo comes oh. back to get involved in the play. But you see a little holding down there. <laughs> There's a oh, oh, horse collar, essentially. Jordan, <laughs> Jordan McFadden. <laughs> Two-point takedown on Quincy Riley. He didn't even pretend. He went, all, he went in for it all. Well, first and 14 after they step it off. Shipley fires ahead. At the 10, he hurdled the man. Oh, Touchdown. My. Oh, my. We said they needed more Shipley, but who saw that coming? I mean, leap over a man, run through two would-be tacklers? Uh, come on, that's got to be a sports center top ten. You won't see a better run this weekend. You might not see a better run this month. Oh, man. 25 yards and the touchdown for Shipley. Speed athleticism leap over a guy and then show some power to run through two tacklers and to get the touchdown are you kidding me not nothing better this weekend not a single thing better You've got a big 12 matchup november college football with all the pressure of the playoff chase gcu texas tonight on abc you're watching the ACC on ESPN. And we're at Frank Howard Field at Memorial Stadium. Dabo Sweeney said one time, Death Valley, South Carolina. And the home team leads 24 to seven, the number 10 Tigers riding the running of Will Shipley.
to a 17-point lead and a 25-yard touchdown run a moment ago. Let's check with Tiffany. Guys, DJ Uyunglele told me that Will Shipley is an animal. Pretty fitting after that play. We saw the Clemson side come to life, and offensive coordinator Brandon Streeter told us that Shipley is the heart and soul of our offense. He's so versatile. They've got so many different ways to get in the ball, guys. That was an excellent play by him. Ooh. Well, you know, he's done some training with Christian McCaffrey and, uh, and their pals. I think he earned himself a text from Christian McCaffrey with that play. Yeah. So now Brock Dolman in relief of Malik Cunningham here in the second half. He and the cards got to get it going. And Jawar Jordan wanted a face mask. mask and no flag on the play. Yeah. Loss of one. I think that was clearly a face mask. Ooh, Tyler Davis, maybe? Second down 11. Loss of one. No marker. Jordan checks out. He's one of three cards to the bottom of the screen. Throw to the perimeter. And shoved out of bounds over there is Tyler Hudson. You know, that, that's the kind of missed calls that that gets fans upset. You know, you're like, wait a minute, you can you can get the ones in the pile, but the one blatantly open, right. the guy's head gets turned around and you miss that ball. Yeah, it would have been first and ten at the yeah. 40. Look, look, and Louisville needs all the help they can get. Yeah, because now if you're Scott Satterfield, you're in a little bit of a danger zone here. Yeah, you are. Tiger defense is fired up. They posted four three and outs. The crowd smells blood. They smell the next victory louder than they've ever been today. Six on the line for Clemson. Doman hit as he throws. Heck of a catch. In traffic is Marshawn Ford, who's listed as a tight end, but sometimes looks more like a big slot receiver. Out to the 43 in a first down. 6'2", 240. And Doman put this ball on the money. Tough guy. And now a long play and catch, and the cards are back at it inside the 10. And that's Hudson. Tyler Hudson. And a huge play for Louisville. Tyler Hudson. Well, and Hudson is the big play receiver. He's the guy that's really come on. Lately for, for Louisville, scored his first major FBS touchdown, double move to get deep. And he got uh, by Jalen Phillips, and then Nate Wiggins saved the touchdown. First and goal. This is quite a response by Louisville. First play over 50 yards this year allowed by the Tigers. That went 54. And into the fray at the left side. Was Jordan and he got a yard to the three So a moment ago where the cards might have been teetering a little bit Now all of a sudden first and goal inside the Clemson five after the big 54 yard pass play And Dolman and Louisville trying to Rally from the big punch that Clemson just threw a moment ago and Doman is a capable runner that's Ford in motion. Delman giving ground for the ball. It's still loose, and Louisville collects it at the 14. Woodass banged it out of there. And then the cards, Jordan falls on it. Wow. That, that was close for Louisville. This ball, by every right, belonged to Clemson. You got a couple guys around there, and they couldn't handle it. You saw Miles Murphy, 98, was the first to get his hands on it, but couldn't keep it. Davo Sweeney's off the bench. Just yelling at his team here for a critical third down and goal. Wood has Ardola from the pocket, breaking free to his right. And Trotter blast him. The ball was loose, but out of bounds is the ruling, I believe, before it could be scooped up by K.J. Henry. Uh, if you're Satterfield, you're getting a little concerned because Doman isn't hanging on to the football. Right. But right now, your decision is do you take the three points to get something on the board? And the way that Clemson defense is playing, I don't think you can count on getting into the end zone here with a fourth and five. 
Plus some kind of hit by Trout. Oh, man. Clean hit. But Doman's had trouble hanging on to the ball so far. Ruled down, so now a 22-yard field goal try for Turner. Try is away and good. So the big play to Hudson does get the cards a field goal. But Clemson is still two touchdowns ahead when we continue. Now week 11 of this college football season is given us a few highlight moments already, but none bigger than Will Shipley's 25-yard run to right? stake Clemson to a 17-point lead. It's been cut to 14 after the Turner field goal, and Shipley will not return the kick here, so the Tigers will scrimmage from their 25, but he is the star of the last touchdown drive, right? Yeah, well, they mixed it up nicely, though. Made sure they got everybody involved. It started with the rushing attack outside with Moffa, and then Ulyan Galile comes back. Nice throw to the edge, getting Williams involved. And then great blocking up front gets totally lost because of what Shipley did at the end of this. Leaping over a guy and running through two tacklers. So here is DJU with Moffa off the 25 and the sophomore from Grayson High School, north of Atlanta. Phil Moffa for a yard. Just getting word now from the Louisville bench area. Cunningham is done for the rest of the day at quarterback. So it's Doman's game yeah. at signal caller and a right shoulder. Huh. The injury. Now that's the throwing shoulder yeah. of the Louisville quarterback. Well, you know, he was struggling the entire first half anyway. You know, he was toughing it out. He was not close to 100%. Louis Angelale. Wow. Son Ogo. My goodness. I think the physicality that Clemson has played with today has been the biggest issue. And then you see something like this from Sonoga saying Louisville can be physical too. It's in the middle of your screen. They're going to bring him inside on a blitz. Comes right, blows through that physical offensive line today with a big hit. Momo has been terrific. In fact, Satterfield speaks of his full impact on the team, not just his play, and that'll be thrown incomplete on purpose because Yasir Abdullah was peeling in on DJ Uyunglele. This is a chance for Louisville to get back into the game. You know, you got a punt back in Clemson's territory. There's a chance to get good field position. Third three and out for the Tigers. Yeah, you know, this, this defense starting to assert itself a bit in the second half now. A little bit more confidence. The punt from Swanson toward Braden Smith is a good one. From the 26, Smith trying to find a lane and helped out of bounds around the 39-yard line. So, two touchdown lead for the number 10 Tigers. We play on from the upstate, lead the cards by two touchdowns. Let's check with Tiffany Blackman. Hey, guys, you mentioned that Malik Cunningham's day is done. Well, I watched him come out from the tunnel and street clothes. He was walking on a mission to get to that huddle and try to motivate his team. He said he thinks about that loss to Clemson last year, that last drive every day. He's going to try to fire these guys. Tyon Evans with Doman and dumped on the pass. And about four on the play. Well, you know, almost five. Louisville offensive coordinator Lance Taylor had a really good game plan for this game. But when you lose Malik Cunningham, it changes that game plan. He had to kind of scrap all that and go with something different. And now he has to play to the strengths of Doman. Now, listen. There goes Evans. Yeah. First down. Oh. The ball and recovered. Jalen Phillips falls on the rock after Trotter. Trotter. It out. Trotter with the big hit. Trotter with the big hit. Again, ball security's been an issue for Louisville. Doman put it on the ground twice last series, but they recovered it. And this time, just watch the end of this thing. Watch Trotter, 54, come in with the hit. And there's the ball. Phillips, the senior, makes the recovery for the Tigers. Right place 
Right time for Jalen Phillips. But Trotter caused that. Man, what a hit. Do you let DJU air it out here? He's playing loose and free. Comfortable with him at this point. Off the 46. Strong throw to Antonio Williams. And he will break the 50 and get a couple of more yards behind that before Quincy Riley makes the stop. Right. Antonio Williams showed up in the summer. Not an early enrollee, right? Yep. Out of Dutch Fork High School in suburban Columbia. Yep. It's quick to say, oh, he's the new Hunter Renfro. Oh, he's the new Amari Rogers. But listening to Brandon uh, Streeter talk about him yesterday, they're expecting things out of a young guy that just got here, especially down the stretch. Uwe Unglele picks up the first down. Well, Williams, by the way, nine catches, 81 yards now, and that's a career high in yardage. Well, they need him to become a big-time player for them. Now, we're used to seeing Clemson with the long, tall receivers who make big plays, as you see DJ Uwe make that run to the outside. But Williams is a small slot receiver, a lot like Renfro. And now we get a flag, and I think this is procedure on, on Clemson. False marks, <laughs> offense, <laughs> number 71, five-yard penalty, the, first down. The Tiger faithful just, oh, kind of had their heart yeah. drop a little bit because Shipley had broken through as the whistle blew and was headed to the green grass of the east end zone. Clemson. Look at this stat. One of six FBS teams without an individual to reach 100 yards in a game this year, Rod. And the other teams are, quite frankly, five of the more poor offensive yeah. teams in the country. Well, during that six-year playoff run, you could count on that happening every week. Right. Here's DJ on the keep. First down and more. That, that's where some of the criticism of DJ is, is unfair because he has not had the receivers that the other elite quarterbacks here have had. The T. Higgins. Yes. Those guys. Sammy, Sammy Watkins. Watkins yeah. yeah. New Hopkins. Yep. I mean, it's a long and distinguished list. And Will Shipley only survives there because Monty Montgomery, or Dorian Jones, rather, the linebacker, who's played, by the way, very well today for Louisville. Sophomore red shirt. From Plantation, Florida. Look at that. There's your backup on that. 44 games yeah. in that run. Yeah. With a 100 yard and, receiver. And not once did you hear this quarterback complain and say, I don't have the talent around me that the other great quarterbacks here have. Never complain. Third down and a full five here for the Tigers. Louisville bringing pressure. Backs up, throws a strike. That's Williams. And he fumbled the ball. Louisville's got it. Cards are going to pick it up on the bounce. That's Jones making another play for Louisville. Is there any chance that that was an incomplete pass? Any chance that he never had control? As you know, the catch, no catch, is one of the points of emphasis this year. But it looks to me like he... He did put the ball away and made a football move trying to cut back inside. So I, I think he's got possession here and starts back with the move. One turnover leads to another. Yeah. So as you hear Jeff Heaser tell the crowd here at Clemson, this play is going to go under review. Stripped out by Abdullah, recovered by Dorian Jones. Louisville, number one in the country, and turnovers gained. And today, they've picked up two more. And with the this call, stands. call on the field is a fumble, so it takes indisputable video evidence to overturn that call. In other words, it's got to be absolutely clear, you know, that it was an incomplete pass. I know in real time it was a question that hit me was did he have control over it and seeing it in slow motion it looked to me like he like he had a moment to gather and put it away and then try to make a move and got stripped. So I, I think the call on the field was correct. By the way the freshman Blake Miller at the right tackle spot after a terrific play on the carom by Jones to scoop it. Then you see Abdullah strip it. The ball's out. 11 Jones will scoop it up. 
And then the big right tackle from Strongsville, Ohio. There's Back Miller further. knocking it out. On the field stands. Yeah. Down Louisville. So the cards have picked up two more yeah. takeaways. Yeah. And just not enough video evidence to overturn the call. Now listen, if I'm Louisville right now on offense, I'm thinking one thing that worked last series before they turned it over was the double move to get a receiver deep. And that receiver being their big threat, Hudson. Go back to that until Clemson proves that they can handle it. Maurice Turner has come in as the running back now for Louisville. Young freshman from Coffee County High School in Nichols, Georgia. Doman will be sacked. That's Barrett Carter. Carter with a little help from K.J. Henry. Now, this is the defensive front we're accustomed to seeing from, from Clemson. A team that brings pressure, just wipes out an offensive line, and now you've got a second down and very long. Brock Doman retreating, and the pass is complete out of the backfield. That is Turner. I think the crowd wanted a, a holding call. Not going to get it. I expect we'll get more pressure here from Clemson. Bulldog has struggled with it. They have been heating up Doman. Third and 13. And Trotter chasing. He throws incomplete. Carter was defending. And Louisville will have to punt. How about Turner. Doman's strength to hold off Trotter and get rid of that ball? I mean, that was a sack. But Trotter couldn't get him down. And Doman with the, with the Heisman, the stiff arm, the left arm, keeps him away long enough to get rid of it. Of course, Jeremiah's dad was a terrific player on Sundays. Many years in Philadelphia at linebacker. As they like to say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. There'll be a little film study on that one. Grab that quarterback by the arm and yank him down. And Williams, a fair catch at the 10 on a 48-yard punt. Don't forget, Tuesday, the Champions Classic back in Indianapolis this year. The normal thing. Some kind of that, night, That's it? wild. Gonzaga, Michigan State, a terrific game. Yeah. On the USS Abraham Lincoln. Off the 10, here go the Tigers. That is Shipley picking up five. And that will likely be the final play of the third period. So Clemson is going to take a two touchdown lead to the fourth rod. And Will Shipley as the orange star of the. That is hockey. We go to quarter four, Frank Howard Field Memorial Stadium, and the place is up for grabs with Rod Gilmore, Tiffany Blackman, West Durham. ESPN's college football delivered by Papa John's. A Will Shipley touchdown, the only marker for Clemson, a Turner field goal for the Cards. And it's a two touchdown difference as we start the fourth with a Shipley carry on second down. Talk about a home field advantage. This crowd gets worked up for the fourth quarter. I mean, you, you hear them, you see them. And how about what Clemson does? You know, every team in America puts four fingers up the fourth quarter. They have a little twist on it here. They put the four fingers up, and then they watch a video of all the off-season work and training they did, and it fires up the players and the crowd. Ooh, Ungalale cannot break free. Sonogo on the blitz here, Rod. Well, he's having a heck of a day. Well, he and Dorian Jones have been terrific. He had 13 tackles last week in their win, and he's been in the back. But when they brought him on blitzes, He's been unblockable. Dial up a couple more if you're thinking, you know, how you can make an impact play for Louisville. Turn him loose. Louisville defense has posted two three and outs around a Tiger turnover as well, by the way. 
Here Brian, Brian Brown, the defensive coordinator, has really been aggressive in trying to get his team back into this game. Swanson towards Smith, catches it on the fly. Braden Smith back toward the 47 in Clemson territory. Time for our hardest working player. Brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. And it is this Clemson defense. Yeah, well, if they were looking for a bounce back from last week, they got it. They've done a really nice job of shutting down the rushing attack. Only 85 yards tonight for Louisville after giving up 263 last week to Notre Dame. And it's really been the work of those guys inside Davis, Brzee, and then on the edges, Henry and Murphy doing a bang up job. Loaded pistol. Jordan will get the first carry. And brought down Trotter involved in that. So is Phillips. Louisville had 89 yards of offense in quarter three right now. 54 came on the one play. Yeah. Doman yeah. to uh, Trevor Hudson. Yeah, and again, I, I think that's the matchup that they need to go back to. If you can get Hudson in the slot. Right now he's outside matched up against Wiggins. That's a good matchup for Clemson. They'll take that one. I said Trevor, it's Tyler Hudson, who's the Central Arkansas transfer, who has been the shining star receiving wise today. All start. Offense, number 70. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's the left tackle, Trevor Reed. Yeah. <laughs> Senior in this program and that offensive line for Satterfield that's veteran, although Michael Gonzalez, a sophomore from just outside of Charlotte, has been plugged in to replace Adonis Boone at the right guard spot, but that's the mammoth Reed from Griffin, Georgia, who was guilty of the penalty there. It's a veteran offensive line has been overwhelmed by the pressure Clemson keeps bringing. Tigers coming again. Doman hit as he throws and a big time catch and falling to the ground is Hudson. I believe in traffic. Sick. Nate Wiggins hanging all over Tyler Hudson. Hudson couldn't get offers. The offers he wanted coming out of high school didn't run the fast enough 40 time. He was just a guy who caught everything, ran great routes. But when he went to camps, he ran slowly, ran four sevens. And that kept him a few years from getting here to the big time. And he is an elite receiver, no matter what his 40 time is. Seven for 120 today for Hudson. Jordan on the first down give. And he will fight to the 31. So second down next, Tiffany for the cards. Hey guys, you were just talking about Tyler Hudson, well, offensive coordinator Lance Saylor said he plays basketball on grass. That guy can get up and they love to do those 50-50 drills in practice. Here's Doman, the quick throw and another catch and a first down. And it's Hudson again, ahead of Makuba. Well, Hudson is free to roam because Clemson is playing a very soft, sort of a two deep look. Coverage, mostly quarters coverage, laying off with their corners and their safeties, each covering a quarter of the field. Now they switch out of it a bit. Pistol set on first and ten. Jordan flipped around, no gain on the play. But thinking ahead, you've got no choice if you're Louisville. This is four down territory. You need a touchdown to get back in this game. You've taken it away twice. Your plus one takeaway giveaway. And here is second in the full 10. And trouble for Doman. He will throw it away. And in the neighborhood was Smith. And it was 98 Murphy bearing down. Doman, by the way, is 8 of 11 for 107 yards. Now, granted, 51, 54 on one shot. Yeah, but he's been good with the ball by and large. You know, he's gotten rid of it, not taking sacks. Showed some strength in doing so. Now, remember, this is four down territory. So you got two downs to pick up 10 yards. And if I'm Louisville, Hudson is really the guy, particularly if he can, if you can get him in the slot there. He's on the outside right now. With Smith. Doman, across the middle, incomplete. Intended for Smith and Makuba there. Now remember, 
you can get your hands on a receiver and it's not pass interference so long as you don't impede his ability to make the catch. Now the hand on the backside is okay so long as you do not turn him. That's a good clean call. Hand on the backside's all right. You still Donald Hudson here, Rock? I still want him. That's the matchup you need to look for. He's your he's your difference maker in this ball game if you're Louisville. Louisville is 7 of 22 this season on fourth down. Doman back foot throw and incomplete. And the cards will give it away on downs. And I think Louisville thought there was a penalty coming. And Scott Satterfield, as they were trying to throw it to the 6-2 freshman Bell, and the cards aren't happy. Turnover on downs, Clemson by 14 early in the fourth. Right about that, Matt. Dogs on top, seeing the Bulldogs and the collection of cowbells tonight. Now, let's go back to that fourth down play because Louisville has a legitimate beef. They're trying to get the ball to Chris Bell, number 80, outside down here in the bottom. He's gonna run a post pattern. Now watch Jones, number six, grab him and just hold on and ride him so that he can't get to the ball. That's holding or pass interference. And the argument that it's uncatchable, of course it is. He wouldn't let him run. There's a toss wide side. Will Shipley turns the corner, slides down to stay in bounds to keep the clock moving toward the 10 minute mark here in quarter four after the first down. Yeah, but that was a big non call. Yep. Because Louisville would have gotten a first down and it's still a chance to score. And now you see Shipley toss play to the outside. We said at halftime, Shipley needed more touches for Clemson to win this game. 15 carries, 97 yards now for Will Shipley. First down and 10. That's Allen the tight end in motion. And Shipley just lowers the shoulder and moves forward. Will closing in. That may be enough for another 100 yard day today. Eighth career 100 yard game rod for Will Shipley out of Weddington, North Carolina, the Charlotte suburb. That's his fifth this year with 100 or more. Of course, he was the star against Syracuse. Remember the comeback? Yep. 172 and two touches here. He is quite the player. DJ with the fake of the toss and then runs right into full blown traffic. Rieger, the end. Held the spot in the road, makes the play. Well, can the Louisville defense come up with another stop and keep the Cardinals' hopes alive? So third now and eight. They've been aggressive on third down. Showing man coverage again, showing pressure. Do they stay in it or come out of it? Tight end and two receivers to the field side for Uwe Ungalale. And oh boy. Right into the fray, and Monty Montgomery drops the hammer on DJU. Coming right off the edge. No hesitation. You want to run the quarterback? I don't care if he pitches it or keeps it. I'm going right after it. Yeah. That is aggressive and to the point. This Louisville defense just won't quit. They keep giving the offense one more shot at it. Can't tell you how good a job Brian Brown has done with yeah. this unit. Yeah. Swanson, a little rugby kick this time, trying to flip it over towards Smith, who's going to play it off a hop at the 22. Eludes the first guy, and he'll stretch it to the 35, and that's where the cards will go to work. So, it's 7.47 to go in the ball game at Tiger Town. Clemson about two scores. When you start with better ingredients, better pizza, you all... Ball is delivered by Papa John's. The shakaroni is back at Papa John's, and it's fit to feed a shack sized family. Well, the last gentleman you're going to see here is... Henry M. Kunkel Sr., known as Buddy, who was drafted into the service during World War II, served in the Air Force as an engineer gunner on a B-26 bomber. 
He's being honored today by the Tigers at 105 years of age. Wow. He flew 65 missions, including the invasion of Normandy and the Battle of the Bulge. We should all be so lucky to look that good and to have provided such a service. By the way, during Battle of Bullock, struck Kunkel's first aid kit, protecting his chest and saving his life. It's an honor to be in your presence, sir, today. Absolutely. Evans will get the ball from Doman on the first down play. No gain there. And Brock Doman is at the wheel here now for the cards. As Barrett Carter made the stop a moment ago because Malik Cunningham was injured on the final play of the first half. Yeah, right? a, a play that they probably didn't need. It was a wasted play, and they lost him. But they've got to slow this pass rush. That is the number one thing for the Louisville Cardinals right now. Doman under duress. Flags thrown. He put it up for grabs. It's incomplete. And R.J. Mickens found his way from the safety spot. This is a hold on Louisville. Holding offense, number 70. 10 yard penalty. Second down. That's Trevor Reed on Louisville's fourth penalty. How about Wes Goodwin, the defensive coordinator for Clemson? He's like, they can't block us. We'll just bring it. And you'll see the hold on the left side there. That's by Reed. But listen, they, they brought more that they could block. And those that were being blocked got rid of the blockers. And you know what? If you're Clemson, run it right back. Dial it up again. That they, stop you? No, they can't handle the pressure. Look, six pressures already, a couple sacks. You've got Doman unnerved with all the pressure he's getting. Second down. Batted in the air, and Carter almost picked it. K.J. Henry. Got the proverbial paw on it. Yeah, and this is really bad now for, for Louisville. You can't slow the pass rush. You think about something like screen game or so, probably not going to get you enough. You need 21 yards. You need two scores. You need a big play. You need someone to give you a catch and run, and you need your offensive line to protect. It's been Hudson who's been the big play guy in the throw game. They're going to try Jordan on that sweep to the far side. He'll turn the corner and nearly wow. pick it up. Well, he gives them a, a, a shot at a fourth down play if he didn't pick it up. It's going to be a couple of full yards. They needed. Hey, kudos to Lance Taylor, the offensive coordinator, for going with a run play with the blitz caught up inside. Clemson trying to get organized here as Louisville lines up on fourth and a full two here. Doman shoots it inside. That's caught. Hudson again on a first down against Sheridan Jones. Hudson gets inside whenever he wants to. Press coverage, worked his way inside. Now, when you're in press coverage, you got to keep him out, right? No. Not going to allow it. They get inside. Here goes Jordan, and he will pick up three, maybe four, on the first down carry. Lock continuing gotta, to move here. Louisville trying to get some yep, pace going. Louisville's got to pick up the pace a little bit. You see that first down throw again. Not bad coverage by Jones, but a terrific job by Hudson to get inside. Boy, look at T. Huddy's numbers. 9-135 today. Well, he can't be finished if Kentucky, I mean, if Louisville wants a shot at this. Doman from the gun. Intercepted Carter. And he may be the best player on that defense. They play him at linebacker. They play him at nickel. And when you decide as the defender to cut underneath, you better be certain and he was absolutely certain he could pick this ball off. Second interception of the year for Barrett Carter. What a terrific play. Tigers play. agent zero, Rod Gilmore.
Two touchdown lead, under six. To the 3.30 window, Nebraska all over, or Michigan all over Nebraska as expected on ABC. The big one in the American, right now Tulane trying to fight their way back into it at the start of the fourth quarter. Gators all over the Gamecocks, and NC State perhaps closer than you'd expect against BC. Oh boy, here's Shipley as Clemson takes over, and Louisville biting down. Cade Klubnik has come into the ball game now. Well, I, I, I think Clemson has to be really happy with the way that their quarterback, William Gulale, bounced back today. You know, yeah. the effort was to get some confidence, get him comfortable. And I think we saw that. 19 to 27, 187 and a touchdown. Yeah, and ran the ball very well. I don't think there's as much of a quarterback controversy here as some people would like to think that there, there is. Yeah. And I want to go back to one point you brought up in the first half that I think is really critical. When he was lifted from the Syracuse game, he went to the media and said, I would have pulled me too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then you have a bad night after a bye week at South Bend. And Brandon Streeter yesterday said, you know what? Best job in America is the backup quarterback. He said, when I was here, I was Neilon Green's backup. Right. And I wasn't good enough to start, right. and everybody wanted me to start. Yeah, yeah. And listen, and, and, and this part is clear. If, if Club Nick were light years better, he would have been the starter by now. But this team believes in DJ, and he's the hardest working guy on the team. He has the admiration of everyone. Uh, there's no question about that. Yeah. And here is Maffa. Look at Phil Maffa's leg drive to midfield, beyond to the 46, a first down. And are they going to try and whistle this eventually? I think they do at the 43 of Louisville. Well, you know with the new rule that you can push your teammate forward, the officials are a little bit slower with the whistle these days. And this one results in, what, an extra four or five yards? Maybe ten. A little push here. <laughs> another push. You're right. That's closer to ten than five. Yeah, they measure it to the 43 of Louisville. <laughs> the old chop your feet. How many times did you do that, Gilmore? The Not old chop your feet drill, huh? Yeah. Too old to do that stuff anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Clemson has now run for 201 today. So Cade Klubnik from Westlake High School, that proud program in Austin, Texas, and he'll keep it around the right side. And finally taken down by Abdullah. Ran right behind the tight end, Davis Allen, who helped him. Shows a little burst there. What you can look forward to in the future for Clemson. Speaking of that future for Clemson, it, it is odd not to talk about the college football playoff and Clemson, but listen, it, it would take absolute chaos for Clemson to get back in the mix for the playoff. And and, and Dabo told us yesterday, his focus, ACC championship, yep. you know, finishing with one loss and let, let the playoff take care of itself as it might. Yeah, big one tonight involving who Clemson might play in Uptown Charlotte at first Saturday in December. There is Moffa for a yard, North Carolina and Wake Forest. Coming up on ESPN 2 in about an hour. Well, North Carolina would have to collapse not to that face yes. Clemson in the championship game. Yeah. Tar Heels are clearly in the driver's seat of the Coastal the last year of division play in the Atlantic Coast Conference. So Drake Mays having a terrific year, right, yeah. as you know. Just a sensational season for Mac Brown's team, who, like Clemson, their only loss is Notre Dame. Yeah. Well, listen, you know, Heisman voters out there, if they have not paid attention to oh Drake Mays, they should. Yep. Uh, I certainly have taken note of his performance this season as a voter. Yeah. Here's the remaining ledger for the Tigers. Miami is here next Saturday. The Canes are on the way to finishing Georgia Tech today in Atlanta. And then, of course, the Palmetto Cup awaits the Saturday after Thanksgiving with Shane Beamer. Oh, and how about a little blind resume? Oh, okay. Strength of record, strength of schedule, FPI. Both teams are eight and one. You got a guess? We'll take a look here. Let's get to second down out of the timeout here. 
There is the give to Shipley and Will to about the 28. Okay, down and eight for the Tigers at Louisville's 28-yard line with Rod Gilmore, Tiffany Blackman, Wes Durham. Joe Taylor, our producer, Mike Griffin, our director. Our crew's done a phenomenal job today here at Clemson. In a great environment, yeah. Yeah, terrific. And here is Shipley trying to elude a couple tackles, and the ball popped out. Cardinals say they have it, and getting off the ground with the ball is Sonogo. Rieger banged it out of there, and another turnover. It's Clemson's third of the day. Uh, and Shipley again put the ball on the ground. And listen, ever since that first quarter, when he hurt his hand pass blocking, he hasn't really taken good care of the football. And that's been an issue for him. He's had some tremendous runs today, but securing the football that's been an issue since you hurt that hand. Great play by Rieger. Yeah. And how about how about the day for Sonogo? I mean, Sonogo and Dorian Jones at Wow. Oh, man. Now the issue for Louisville has been the inability to slow down the Clemson pass rush. And if they ever needed protection with a chance to get a score and have an onside kick opportunity, it is right now. Three to the field, one to the boundary. Doman in trouble. He will shovel it out. And that is Turner, the freshman, who got spun around and dropped right around the line of scrimmage by K.J. Henry. Oh, and Shipley. That is full-blown competitor. I understand it. Yeah. Knows his team can... Coast to the win. Here's Doman, a back foot throw on the Man. trotter pressure. Man, they are bringing all kinds of different pressures. They came with three and a delayed blitz by two more, yep. and Louisville couldn't pick it up. Don't forget 7.30 East. So third and 10 here. I think it's fair to say that this defensive front had a bad day last week. Yeah. They're back to playing the way that they normally play. Third down. Domino straight drop. Henry got there, throws, Hudson the catch, and that's Wiggins collapsing. Tyler Hudson. Well, that's the whole idea behind pressure. You either get to the quarterback or you make the ball come out quickly, and then you make the tackle. He doesn't have time to get it deep down the field. He's got to get rid of it quickly. And Wiggins in perfect spot now. Fourth and six. Keep bringing the pressure, right? Yep. Two by two look for the cards. Clemson trying to sneak home. Henry was there. The throw offline for Smith. No flag on the play. And Wes Goodwin's defense gets the stop on downs. I got to tell you. When you're playing in the defensive secondary and your front gets pressure on the quarterback like that, it is so much fun. It is so much fun to hang back there because you know there isn't time for a guy to run double moves on you. You know things are going to happen fast. You can be aggressive. It is fun to be a Wiggins when you're back there and your front is getting after the quarterback like that. So Wiggins, a sophomore from Westlake High School in Atlanta. Louis Unglele back in the ball game here with Maffa. That's the Clemson battery behind the center Putnam. And Phil Maffa to the left side. Big fella open field 20. He'll ride the block to the five and reach for the end zone. That'll put that young man over 100 yards for the day. A 39-yard run. Tremendous cut back here. Finding that seam in that little inside zone play. Look at fight through the final tackle to get that touchdown. He wanted that so badly. Well, we've seen two really good TD runs in the second half, haven't we? Yeah, how about it? 248 rushing yards for Clemson today. 
They wanted to bounce back and be physical today. They got it on both sides of the ball. Sure did. Potter kicks the point. Three touchdown lead for Dabo Sweeney's team. Heck of a run here by Boffa. Yeah, he gets a lot of help up front. You see them just push everybody to the left the way they want it to go. Caught them going that way. And just a nice little cut and slide in behind there. Wide open hole. And stretch it out, young man. Stretch it out. Get that touchdown. Well, the Tigers are going to post their 39th straight home win on the six-year anniversary of their last home loss. And they're going to avoid back-to-back -back losses. Last time that happened, Rock, 11 years ago. <laughs> they Every lost to NC State and at South Carolina at the tail end of the 2011 regular season. Wow. And listen, no player on this team knows what it's like to lose a home game. That is amazing. Whether you are a freshman or a senior or a fifth year, you've never lost at home. You count on a good party. End over end kick. No return for the cards. Don't forget tonight, 7.30 Eastern on ABC and of course on the ESPN app. Undefeated number four TCU is in Austin tonight to see Sarks Longhorns at number 18 in the college football playoff. You know, Chris Fowler, Kirk Curb Street, Holly Rowe, the coverage, 7.30 Eastern time. I'm not convinced that Robinson isn't the best player in the country. I mean, that running back is spectacular for Texas. I, I think Sonny Dykes is national coach of the year, and it's not close. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's a good call. Yeah. I mean, I can see some others getting some votes, you know, but I, I, if I were voting today, I'm with you. Yeah. Robinson is an intriguing candidate, especially as November unfolds. And we were talking about postseason awards, be it the Heisman or be it some of these other honors, right? A lot about what happens in November determines that, as you know. Yeah. I mean, how strong is your team? What kind of individual numbers do you put up? I, I think the, te the Heisman is still pretty wide open. I would agree. And as a voter, I, I really wait until November to start really. Look at this. This is Maurice Turner, the freshman from Coffee County High School in Georgia, down at Nichols, Georgia, racing into Clemson territory with 97 seconds to play before Barrett Carter can make the stop. Uh, as a voter, to me, what happens in November really, really matters in that Heisman race. Play big and big games. Mm -hmm. That's Here. quite a stage tonight for the Horn Frogs and the Longhorns. Here's a throw, and that ball is thrown to Hudson, and it is ruled a catch on the field inside the 15 at the 14, I believe. And he is something else. Oh, he, incomplete. Huh? Just to be able to make an effort on this play. You know, you can argue that that left hand is a little pass interference to keep him from fully extending to make to make the catch. The right foot. Of yeah. Tyler Hudson's right foot, at least on that first glance, Rod, looks like it might have touched down with control of the football. This young man was a highly, highly decorated wide receiver at Central Arkansas. Let's take a look. 27 touchdowns there, right foot. That's in bounds. Does he have control of the ball? Yeah, he does. And does he complete the action after he hits the ground? He does. That's a heck of a throw by Dolman, by the way, right over the top of Toriano Pride. Young true freshman from St. Louis. It's amazing how a talented receiver can be overlooked because Folks didn't think his 40 time was fast enough. Let me tell you this. Tyler Hudson's got 27 catches in his last four games. Yeah. 10 today. Well, you know, they found out that he is a difference maker. And he, they got to target him. You know, the name of the game offensively, the get the ball to your playmates. The receiver did make the catch at the 15-yard line. It'll be first down and 10. The clock will start on the snap. So 74 seconds to go. Hudson now 11 catches, 163. <laughs> 
He's got a 54 yard grab here in the second half. And Brock Doman from Colorado Springs, Colorado has been looking the way of Tyler Hudson from Spring, Texas. Can you blame him? No, sir. Hudson will go to the boundary side. 42 lifts him as the tight end kind of in that slot to the field. Throw to the end zone and Hudson caught it backing out. There's a flag down on the play. I think he got that left foot in. And is it a touchdown? Pass interference on the offense. Got him is for the push, up, push off. Yeah. But he made that catch. I think that left foot is in, but you can't see it from this angle, but a little bit of push off. Normally, offense number zero. Yeah. Normally, if there's mutual combat, no call. But watch the separation here. Little elbow there, and there you see immediately the, the official saw it, flagged it. So Scott Satterfield's team ticketed back to the 30. And his pride on the coverage there. He was. Complaining about the push off, appropriately so. Scott Satterfield, not happy at all. Domino keep. And boy, took a pounding at the 20. My goodness, Murphy was there, Phillips was there. Goodness. Looked like Pride might have also gotten a look in there, too. Yeah. Here's Doman. Final 50 seconds to the end zone, oh. and Smith had to go right through the wickets. Oh, you cannot make a better throw. Could not make a better throw. Talk about on the money. Just lost it. No one feels worse right now. So third and 15. Louisville, of course, out of timeouts. Doman from the pocket again to his right. He'll be sacked. There's Barrett Carter again. He's going to have nightmares of that zero purple jersey. As Carter's been everywhere tonight. Got a pick. Sacks. How about leaping over a would-be blocker to go get the quarterback? It's Carter. Watch that. Just jumped over the blocker. Mm. Some kind of afternoon for Barrett Carter. Some kind of athlete. Doman will shoot one to the end zone for Braden Smith. Held on through the catch. And that is a Louisville touchdown. Braden Smith, a heck of a catch here. That one makes up for it, huh? On the final play of the game. That's a tougher catch. And he comes down with this one. Heck of a throw. But watch the end of this. Gets the both knees down. We, we got Clemson fans storming the oh, field. This is the meet at the bar. Meet, yep. A Frank Howard field Memorial Stadium tradition. And they celebrate a Tiger victory. 31-16, Clemson. Back to work, Devo Sweeney said yesterday, Rod. And got it. He wanted physical play. Defense showed up with it. Offensive line did. And their quarterback played like a star. Yeah. Louisville sees their four-game win streak go by the boards. They'll get NC State next Saturday.